Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. The radio is extremely long, kind of like the BMW style. Um, I'll measure that and see how far it is, if it's similar to the BMW and everything like that. But it is really, really nice. Um, it does look super clean. Obviously, it's just extremely bright because of the way this is. But they were supposed to upgrade this, but it's still analog. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Um, that's a kind of fail in my opinion because the Bronco has a full digital dash. Full digital. This is full digital, even larger. So why would you leave this analog? It was supposed to be updated, so not quite sure. But this looks really nice. I will give him credit on that. Okay, so this is gonna be weird, um, mainly because this is totally different. In the 2024, it is totally different. So the screen is different, dash is different, this is different. The way that this mounts here, all the way into here, this is all different. Um, they've changed a lot about this dash, so taking this apart is probably not gonna be like the older ones. It, it might be similar, but it's not gonna be exactly the same because this used to be cut off here, and there was a piece that pulled off here and a piece that pulled off here, so this is totally different. Um, a lot of this looks the same, but they just changed a lot of stuff about it, especially the screen. So this could be pretty interesting on how hard this is going to be to take all this out to get these speakers. So I'm gonna try to do this speaker here and then that speaker down there and then the top one and then the top one. We'll see how this goes. We're gonna start trying to take this piece off. I wanna see what harness is behind here. So we're gonna start by trying to pull this piece off, this long piece across. Let's see what happens. Okay, what we did is we took our plastic pry tool and we went all the way around here and pulled out and we got this thing loose. So I think it's gonna pull out all the way across. So we've got it off, but it's starting to get stuck right here. So I'm gonna try to hit it from this side and come around. Go ahead and start popping this off because I think what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna have to pop this off, we're gonna have to pop this off and unscrew it here and unscrew it inside here to get this whole piece off. This is definitely not gonna make it easier on anybody because they should have just stuck it right there like they did last time, but whatever. Yep, I was correct. So you got one screw, one screw. We're gonna pull this up here and there's gonna be a, we're gonna pull this up and there'll be a screw and a screw behind here. So we're gonna take those off just to get this piece off. And that will also help us to get to this speaker as well. So it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. So one screw, one screw, one screw, one screw. Both this screw and screw came out with the right angle Phillips right there to get that one and that one out. Now we're gonna take these two out. We kind of rock this to get it out and then boom. Underneath here, you got two screws. One, two right there. This one with a right angle, and this one with the right angle ratchet is the best and easiest way to get both of these out. Got those out. So I'll show you. One, two out, and then one, two out. So hopefully this will pop right out. So I learned the hard way. Getting this off, it will not come off here. So I finally got behind here and you can barely even see it way back here, but this piece comes out the backside. I've never in my life, man, they are really stretching for a bunch of people to break stuff. Like I think this was an afterthought and they just completely butchered this up. Um, there's that, about the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow, that which I think was an afterthought. And I'll bet money. Yep, look, look at that. One, two, three screws. How are you gonna get to those? One, two, three screws. Stupid asses, man. How? God. Oh, look, comes right off now. 
after you remove the three screws. What is the point of that? You guys made this really difficult on anybody to remove this. Not only do you have to remove all these four over here, you gotta remove these three just to get that piece off. Stupid. Looks like from behind, you're gonna have to take, I took a stubby screwdriver and I went out from behind and unscrewed it that way. That's how I got to it. <laughs> never, never see anything like this, I can be honest with you. So underneath here, there's a screw. Guaranteeing there's the same one on the other side. We're gonna try to take this whole piece up up here. Hey, there's two screws on each side. One, two, one, two. All right, so after you remove those two and those two, this piece pops up. It takes a lot of force. There's the back side and the back side. Oh my goodness. Then you're gonna have to take this piece off right here to get this piece off. In the same way on this side, that piece off to get this whole piece off. The one that goes all the way across. Here's the back side of that piece with all the clips and these two pieces right here that will make your life a living hell. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and this off because it looks like it goes behind this, this screen. Here's one, two, three and it is moving so that is a positive I just gotta figure out where else everything is at um, might have to take this whole entire airbag cover off because there might be bolts behind here I'm guessing and then there might be bolts over here as well so I'm not sure how to get this screen off but man this is a nightmare I'm gonna try to take this one off eight millimeter off and then eight millimeter off here. See if that gives me some leeway to pull this back because it's moving down here, it's moving, but it's real tight right here. I just did that and the whole thing just popped off. That's crazy. Whole thing just came right off. As soon as you take off those three. And then this whole handle will come off. Taking all these off, everything, all these. Taking all these, I'm gonna start taking all these around. I'm gonna take that one off. I'm gonna try to take every screw I can visually see. I might even take the ones over on the cluster off too. Because this thing is moving, but I can't get it out. It's loose. Right here, I got that, because I took that off. I'm gonna go ahead and take these side ones off, see if I can pull this piece down. So I can figure out a way to get this off and get that off. Underneath here, seven millimeter here, seven millimeter here. And I'll bet money that we're gonna have to take this piece off it's like the driver's side, I'm guaranteeing it. Boom, that comes off two clips. And I'll guarantee you, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong. Okay, they don't have one underneath here. Maybe it's because they have these two underneath here. They don't need to have this one like the driver's side. The driver's side one has it right up underneath here. The last screw to this puzzle is right, like I can't even get to it with the camera, that's how bad it is. It's right back here, hidden way back here. I can't even get to it, the camera, because the camera can't even get down there. It's right there. Here's the whole bottom piece, which comes off fairly easy. And then you can get right to the pod. Still don't know how to get that radio out though. <laughs> I've tried everything. You, at least you don't take the whole dash off unless you're trying to get that radio out. So the only reason you have to take the whole dash off basically is just to get this plastic piece out. Um, and then you don't have to take the airbag and all that stuff out like the other, like the 13 and under. So we got a screw here, screw here, screw here, and here. I'm gonna take those four off and maybe I can get this thing to pull out. Took all these, took all these screws out. Um, not the dash ones, but these ones right here for the cluster. Took all those out, pulled on it, and then I pulled on this out, and then I pulled on this part right here out. And this thing is starting to move. So this whole cluster has to come out as one. This whole piece has to come out, but I'm not quite sure how to get the bottom of it out yet. Okay, once you get that all out, you just yank on this part real hard on the bottom and it's got clips in it and it all comes out. That's crazy. See, there's clips. I had to yank on it pretty hard, but it pulled out. As soon as I got the clips to pull out, everything came out. My goodness, but it's all one piece though. You gotta be careful, one piece. I'm gonna take off this screw, this screw, remove this whole vent. I'm gonna take off this white plug, this gray plug, and then probably unscrew all four screws back there and take out the brain and see what's behind there. Hopefully, it's exactly what I need. I 
This unplugs very easy. You just get in there and just push on it. Push down right here and it unplugs. This one is not so easy. You have to turn it upside down and get to this top part of this plug and push down on it. Very difficult. Um, sorry, it's not focusing, but basically what I had to do is take this and push down on it. It's a pain in the butt to get out. I can promise you that. Still gotta take these screws out on the back side. Well, unfortunately, this is not good news. Behind the head unit, it does not have the plugs like the older ones. They have changed the plugs on the back. So we are completely screwed. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out a new way to make the DSP work because this is not gonna work because it's not the same plug. Well, we'll figure it out. Well, we're gonna start with taking this piece off here. Um, the older Jeeps, what you would do is you would pull down on this top part right here. Um, this one's a lot different than the other ones too. See, everything's changed. This is crazy. So we just unclipped this like the older ones and pulled this side down. Okay, there we go. So it's very similar to how the other one pulled off, but it's kind of a little bit different. So that's what that one looks like. Um, it just doesn't like, the older one kind of rolled down. This one kind of snaps in and it still connects up underneath here. So we're gonna just keep going from there and see how this goes. Next step we're gonna do is we're going to take this piece off on the side here. We're gonna take our plastic pry tool and pry this out and pray that Everything is super accessible. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out here. Got one here at the bottom that wants to not be very nice. There you go. Got bad boys out. There's all your push pins on the back. That's what it looks like behind that. That's pretty similar to the previous models as well. So we've got one seven millimeter down there. We've got another another seven millimeter here. One here one there we're probably going to take this one off and this one off we're going to remove anything that's probably one to the speaker right there so this one's probably to the speaker box um, i'm just going to remove them all take them all off never hurts to take off all of them because at least we can get this out that's my plan this project we're going to be using our drill and our right hand milwaukee that we pretty much use for everything and that way it just makes it a whole lot easier just to get in all these screws we also had to use the right angle seven millimeter and let me tell you jeep just stop it look at this you can't even get back there no matter what so we're going to take a ratcheting wrench like everybody talks about see what we can do maybe even a right angle a thinner right angle head like a manual i'll try that and see what happens oh look we have a winner just get that bad boy in there and then you can just ratchet it out luckily i have awesome tools this little little guy right here, this little Titan guy right here gets into everything. I also have a black one too, whichever one you prefer. We got them all out and I will let you know, once you get this halfway out, you can't go anymore. So I had to take it all out with my finger. Lovely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking off all these screws over here, here, probably here, probably here, probably here. I'm just gonna start taking everything I can apart to see how easy it is to get this thing out of here. Might even take this one off. Might even take off these two 10 mils. I don't know. I'm gonna take all this stuff off and let you know what I take off and need to take off. Right now I've taken off every single thing over here because I look at it as I'm gonna try to figure out a way to get this pot out of here the easiest possible way. Just to let you know, you're gonna have to pull out and pull back on this, boom. And then this piece will come off. It's got two clips here. And a little piece here, it looks like we're gonna have to I don't know what that is, but they put a screw. There's a screw under here somewhere, I'm telling you. Because, I, yeah, right back there, look. Right there. They put a freaking screw right there. What kind of stupid... Right there. Why? 
would you put a screw there? Dude, I'm telling you, Chrysler and Jeep, you need to be freaking fired for this crap. So my seven millimeter ratcheting wrench is gone. So I'm going to use a regular wrench because it's the only thing you can get up in this lovely thing. So I'm just gonna take it off with a regular wrench. Cause look, this is all the room that you have right there. This has got to be the dumbest thing I have ever seen a company do. Probably in 25 years I've ever been doing this. They absolutely make this the worst way to have to try to get something off. Got it, need a ratcheting wrench. So look, look how easy that is to move now that we remove this one last stupid screw right down here. Um, this is moving a whole lot. And this piece looks kind of, yeah, it is separated. I'm gonna try to pull this top part of this dash piece off and see if I can get this to be separated from the, the bottom here. Cause look, it looks, it looks like it separates. See, let me see. Okay, there is a screw right here you need to take out. So we're gonna pull this back just to be able to get the screw out. So just to let everybody know there's one screw here and one screw here. This one came out easy. I had to use the right angle on this one or you could maybe use a long screwdriver and come through the steering wheel and then hit it right there. So right now we've got both of these out. I think that this whole piece will come up now. That was wrong. But I'm thinking about trying to separate this piece from this piece. We'll see what happens. Look at that. Boom. That piece unclips right there from that piece. So we can get this piece out. If we can get this piece out by itself, this one out, we can just get the, the pot out. Okay, so there is a screw behind this one right here, and I'm using a stubby to get to it to try to get to it the easiest way. It's basically connected to this bottom panel, but behind this panel. Just to let you guys know, I got the stubby right there where it's at. It's hard to see, but it's right back there. Got it out. It basically had a clip right there at the top. I got this whole piece out. Isn't that amazing? And I will say, at least Jeep has designed it to where you can get this part off and you don't have to take the whole dash off. That's awesome. We did have to unplug this, so basically we just slid this red part up and then you can push down and you can get into there. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm gonna plug that back in right now. Other than that, we've gotta figure out how this thing comes out of here, which looks like there's gotta be another screw somewhere. Um, don't know where the other screw is, but I'm gonna find that. There might be that one way up in there, maybe. Um, Cause we've removed this one, we've removed this one, and there's a third one somewhere hiding, but I'll find it. Guess what I found back there behind that pink plug right there. Boom, there's the screw. So we're just gonna take a regular screwdriver and get that out of there. That should be the last, the third one for this pod. We went ahead and unsnapped this top piece because I'm gonna go ahead and just take off this screw right here. I think there's, yeah, and one screw right there. This one, right underneath there. I'm gonna take those both off just so that I can get rid of this piece out of the equation right here. Removed one screw, removed one screw. We did that using the right angle right here because it's a pain in the butt to get up into here and to here. Let me tell you, I'm just pulling this up. We have not removed this yet because there's a Thing in the middle not quite sure what goes to that Ooh, looky looky here that's probably why it's not going anywhere so we got to take that out too uh, and i bet that'll let me pull this out to get this out because this is holding this from coming out no luck so we're going to go through the bottom we're going to take off this eight ten and ten and see if we can move this bar and get it out we got all those off and there was a seven mil here we had to get off and guess what? We got it almost completely out. So awesome. We got it out. We need to pull off these. Basically just unplugged, unplugged this plug right here, pushing down here from here. Take off these three sevens so we can take this off. Well, there's the cavity right there. Now, I didn't have to take everything off, but that's a lot just to be able to get that out. But at least it came out. Um, that is all the bolts <laughs> you're gonna have to take off to be able to get all this out of here. And it is a lot of right angle stubbies and everything to get this out of here, but we got it out of here, thank God. So what I'm going to try to make work 
Um, these do work on the JLs for the 18 and up and Gladiators 2020 and up. So I'm praying that they work on this because it is a 2024. So it has been six years and it has been almost four years. It's a JP-1014. I will put a link down in the description below made by Metra and replaces these so we can put a six and a half in here. I am just praying that it will work the same as this. So let's just make sure that this, because our biggest thing is we don't want to have to use like a four inch or a five and a quarter in here. We want to put a six and a half. So with this, there's just no way to do it. This would actually be able to replace it all. does look the same so I think we're in business the instructions look very similar um, when you look at the instructions for this it's very similar to how we took it apart only we just did not take the top part of the dash the front part of the dash or this part off it may be different on a 2024 so that may be why but on the passenger side we'll know now we got this off but it was two pieces right here so when we go to do the passenger side we'll know if it has changed a lot or has not changed um, 72 65 14 12 these are the harnesses that came with them that's pretty awesome so i'll put the link down description below you just click on that description click on the link and it'll go right to your door from amazon same way with these i'll put a link down below it's right underneath the video down in the description click on that and then boom you'll be able to buy these as well not too bad so far now if you have the 23 and under to 18 or gladiator you're gonna have to probably take the whole dash apart so i apologize for that that sucks but they have made it a little easier on the 2024s and i hope it continues to keep being easier as we do this but we'll see go ahead and unscrew this screw basically these three screws take the speaker out pull the harness from the back and then we're going to put it into there so what we're going to do is we're going to pull that whole grommet piece that's a big rubber grommet piece we're going to pull that out so that we can transfer that part into this part right here we went ahead and unplugged the speaker um, basically just unplugged this plug right here is this plug and then down in there is the rubber grommet we're gonna push that out to the back side this is on here like this what i did was i pushed on this thing with a screwdriver until this came up and then we slid this forward there's the rubber grommet installed hanging out the back side we'll clip that in everything's ready to go now i will probably have to break these off you just take some pliers and boom boom and probably these two boom boom because we'll have to fit a six and a half in here i'm probably going to dynamat some in here too just to stiffen this up just a little bit there's our speaker adapters right here just take that plug it into the plug that comes outside of the pod and then boom that plugs right in that way you can put an aftermarket speaker on it and you're not cutting up any of the factory harnesses do not cut these harnesses use a, a speaker harness that's all you got to do these speaker harness adapters they work great this is the part number again 72-65-14-12. I'll put the link down in the description underneath this video. Click on that, click on the Amazon link, buy it, and they're like $10 and they come straight to your house. This will save you a lot of money and time and, and problems in the future. The speakers we're gonna be using, which is the Audio Dynamics 3000 Series ADC CX633. We will have to change the speaker um, adapter pin on it. it does come with a built-in capacitor which is really nice these speakers are extremely beefy really big um, really nice material but we will have to change this because it has a smaller one and a bigger one we need to put two bigger ones on it because these actually use two bigger style and then the capacitors on there these speakers are very high quality especially when you want to compare what you have before so there's your comparison of what you have before and after. Kind of crazy. I know what I'd rather have. a pair of pliers and then you can literally just snap these off they come off super easy and i'll show you it's hard to hold the camera 
and do this at the same time. Kinda actually really hard to do it, to be honest with you. I end up breaking. These are a little bit tougher to pull them, just pull and twist and they'll come right off, just like that. Usually they're super easy, but because these are a little thicker, that's why. We went ahead and used our sing Stinger um, Dynamat, you wanna call it, whatever. No sound deadener. I didn't get it up in there real good. I'll probably have to go over that, but I got it in here multiple pieces. It weighs a lot more and it's a lot more rigid. It used to be like, it sounded hollow. Now it's just a lot thicker, a lot more rigid. We can put the speaker in there and it should give it a little more mid bass bass response compared to the plastic just moving like this and, and, and more rattling and rigid. You know, I want it to be as tough as possible. Um, that way we can get as much mid bass and bass as possible out of these. So I did also take the connector and dynamated it down to this as well. Put some more dynamat in there only because you don't want the connector jiggling around in here. So that way we can just put these speaker leads into it. And then this isn't, this connector isn't bouncing off the inside of here every time the mid bass is hitting as well. That will kind of hold it into place. We've got everything screwed in here, so it's ready. The one thing I do like about these audio dynamic speakers is they do have a foam piece that sits in here, so that kind of helps because these don't seat properly because they are plastic, so it kind of bends it around here. But hopefully the foam piece around it will kind of help secure it in there, but this thing's pretty heavy now with this heavy duty speaker and all the dynamite inside of there, but should sound pretty good. We bolted the seven millimeters back on. We're gonna take this plug here, plug it into right there, and then we're gonna put it back into the dash. So we got it back in here. What I did was I screwed this screw back in and then this screw right here to hold it into place. We're gonna start putting this bar back together. So we got our eight millimeter put back on, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, seven millimeter, and seven millimeter we put back on with the ratcheting piece right here. Should be in there really secure. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in so I don't get any faults and then test out the speaker, make sure it works before I put everything back together. All right, I'm not sure where I left off, but we have removed everything up here, the whole dash. Nothing's the same in this as it is the 23 and under 18 to 23 for five years. Maybe even the same on the Gladiator, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing if you have this screen, you're gonna have these plugs. So it is not the same as like the Uconnect style plugs. Um, that sucks. So this is gonna make it very difficult. Um, we wanna remove this pod right here, so we're gonna need to take the screw out here, um, screw right here, and then screw right here. So this is the three screws that are gonna remove this pod. We wanna get this out, interchange this with a new pod, and figure out how we're gonna do all this. We got this out, and now we're gonna need to unplug this plug, and then this will be completely removable. We're gonna take off these three screws. So we got one screw here, one screw here, one screw here. We're gonna take all three of these off so we can pull this out. What we're gonna to wanna to do is unplug it here. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is push that plug right out to the back side right here, and we need to take that plug off. And then this is the piece that we're gonna need right here to be able to transfer over to our new pod right here. And this pod um, is basically the JP1014. I'll put a link down to that in the description below. I'll show you the box over here. So this is the box that they come in which is a Metra piece, which is a JP-1014. Two new pods from Metra. They will fit 18 and up Wrangler and 20 up Gladiators. This is the only thing that has not changed on the 2024. So thank God these work because I desperately needed those. You will want to take a set of pliers and you will want to pull these back, all these ones that are sticking out. Um, and then when you screw your speaker in, you will also want to knock these holes, like this one right here. Um, I think there's one right here. Yep. 
and then there's one right here. There's just a few, yeah, one right here. You'll wanna put a screw in those screws after you screw this, the speaker in and seal it. I'm also gonna put some Dynamat inside of here. Uh, Killer mat, Dynamat. We also use Stinger mat, which I'll put a link to that in the description below. And then we're gonna transfer this over right here and push it into that part right there. So that way everything will kind of just transfer over and you just put the pot in. This is the harness we're gonna use, which is a 7265-14-12. That's the harness we're going to plug into this right here to be able to make this pot work. And we've also used the Dynamat Kilomat inside of here to kind of beef this up a little bit because it is kind of thin plastic. Speaker is mounted in and we did put one here and one here to plug up those holes. I did want to say that this did get cocked over a little bit. This hole did not line up um, and these were kind of off a little bit as well. But the reason why is the magnet is so large right here and there's a piece that goes down the magnet is hitting up against it so i just kind of moved it just over maybe a sixteenth of an inch maybe eighth and it fits right in there and then re-screwed basically i re-screwed a new hole for here and i think here but this one i got it to go in and this one i got it to go in but other than that we got this plug in ready to plug in there this is ready to go Then all we're gonna do is take this and that plug right there. We're gonna plug it right into that and then bolt it right back in, three screws. So for video purposes, um, when you plug this in right here, which I don't even think it'll plug in because it's being so weird. Okay. So when you plug this into this, hold on, when you're plugged in, the green is positive on that side. Green with yellow stripe is the positive. So just remember that. When you're plugged in, the green is positive on that side. Green with yellow stripe is the positive. So just remember that. This is the amp we're gonna be using, which is a, or sub, I'm sorry, XSAW8 Sony 8 inch woofer. We'll see how this goes. I will say this thing is extremely heavy. Here's the side of it right here where you plug in your power control, your input, your gain controller phase, and then low pass filter. It's weird it doesn't have, oh, I guess you use this as the actual gain controller. That is weird. So they don't have a gain on here. You actually have to use this remote to control the gain. Um, here's the feet. They're heavy duty, really heavy duty metal heavy as well. I guess this is for the gain controller, I'm guessing. The mount that underneath there, I guess. And then here's all the wiring it comes with. It comes with all the wiring you need. And there's the power plug right there. It's actually really, really nice, to be honest with you. Super impressed. I mean, this thing is heavy. If I, I'm gonna weigh it. I'm gonna weigh it, see what it weighs. All right, so I weighed it. And this was, the zero pounds was two pounds over this way. So it's off by about two or three pounds. So it actually weighs 10 pounds. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's heavy for a powered sub. I mean, most of these cheap ones I've got over here, like these cheap ones, they weigh like half the weight of this one. So I'm curious to see what this thing sounds like. Sony's always amazing, so I'm hoping that this will sound awesome. So we're stalling the amplifier underneath the seat. Obviously you just take off the four seat bolts, push the seat back. Um, this is gonna look confusing, but right down underneath here, there is a drain plug right here. I pulled this up, I drilled a hole through here, drilled a hole through here, and we're gonna run our power wire because that's gonna run over to the other side to our powered sub. And then on this side, the amplifier is gonna be here. So we have our four gauge here. We're gonna run that out through here and this is all gonna get cleaned up obviously, but we wanna show you where we ran the power wire through to get the power wire over to that side and then get the power wire into here for the amplifier that's right back there. That's gonna go underneath the seat on this side. So amplifier underneath this seat, sub underneath that seat, wires running through there and then wires, power wires right here running through the grommet. Now, the ground wires are going to connect to this ground terminal right here. So we're gonna put both of our ground wires there. But I just wanna show you guys where we drilled this hole and put through so the grommet, so the power wires can run all the way up underneath to the front. Okay, the green wire on here becomes the gray with purple, it looks like. Yep, gray with purple. Nope, I'm sorry, I have that backwards. So it's the one with yellow. So gray with yellow becomes the green. 
So gray yellow becomes the green. So that's what we're gonna have to remember is gray yellow will become our positive and green will be our positive down here. So we just need to remember that. So we got this bypass right here, using the blue wire as the input, thicker wire going into the six and a half. And then up here, we've got the brown wire and the red wire running up here for the three and a half and tweeter. That's the thinner red black. And then the thicker red black is for the woofer. And the same way the blue is input coming in off this side. And we have these unplugged. It's the Jeep JL and 2024 only have this fuse panel um, we're gonna go to this fuse right here I have to tap into it um, but this one right here is like heated seats there's four of them here this one right here actually all four of these will work but this one's the right and left heated seat and it seats in there properly with this so I'm gonna put it right in there and then push her down and then that's where we're going to tap in for ignition those come up working perfectly with the ignition. So that's what I'm gonna use for my remote wire, ignition wire, whatever you wanna call it. Good thing we didn't bolt the seat down. So we are running the remote wire where we're in the power wire for the sub right through here. So we're gonna run that down, run that with the wires, all going up to the front to the battery. Basically this is a drain plug that we pulled up and we're gonna put that right back here underneath the seat. It's right underneath the seat right here. This is our power wire for the sub, power wire for the highs, and then the blue wire for our ignition and accessory. And then we're gonna take all this wire here and we're going to cover it in loom as well. We're gonna loom the whole entire harness. And then we're going to loom the whole harness and then zip tie it up underneath here. And then we're going to be running up. If you look underneath here, we're going to go up into this fender well and we're going to go up through there. And then we'll go up into the engine compartment up there. So that way we can just kind of run it down through, run it down this channel right here, and then run it up in there into that grommet. And then we'll zip tie it up into here. Here's all the wire. We got it loomed up coming up through here. Going up and behind here. And then behind there, we've got it all zip tied up into there. Going up into the top into the engine. That way everything is in here secure. It's not gonna fall down, especially in Jeeps. You do not want that to happen. And you do not want to leave wires exposed under the vehicle. You always wanna make sure you loom everything because these will be out in the elements. Even though I even taped inside of here, these will be out in the elements. So it's gonna be harsh conditions which could go up in there and just hit something. You definitely don't want that to happen. And here's where we grounded the sub on the other side and the amp underneath here. So that grounding terminal right there. That way you guys can kind of see it. It's a factory ground right there. Right underneath the seat. One video I do want to make on the audio dynamics unit, you do not have to wire up the remote in. I was wrong on that. You just have to wire up the positive, basically the yellow and the ground. So I screwed up. That was causing a lot of problems right there by wiring this in with that. So don't wire the remote in part. to get these up you will want to get underneath this with your plastic pry tool just be really careful because it's kind of a pain in the butt because this piece is 
still loose from where I had it loose earlier. Um, you'll want to get underneath it. I'll have to probably use the other one. But you want to be careful with this back clip back here, that one right there, because it's it's the hardest one to get under. Like that, there you go. And then just take your plastic pry tool and pull up. Um, it's kind of like the Broncos. They're really tough to pull up in the corners. So this corner one back here in the corner is kind of a pain in the butt to get to. I'll have to pull that back off. But if I kind of get back here and then kind of like try to edge it up. There you go. Just be real careful. <laughs> Sounded really careful. But you gotta put pressure on it because see where that's at back there? Right back there in that far corner, you'll you'll break it. So you just gotta be super careful with it. And then you're gonna take Phillips. Phillips or two seven millimeters, and we're gonna use the right and we'll take right angle to take those out. And then now that we've taken those two screws out, boom, there's your speaker. And then we're gonna want to unplug this plug right here, push down on this, and pull the plug out. Here is the whopping factory, beautiful, like almost two inch. <laughs> it's terrible, terrible speaker. I mean, this thing is probably worth 25 cents. At least it has a little capacitor on there. I'll give them that, but that's what you get. And then we're gonna use a speaker harness adapter to plug into there to put the new speaker in. This is the harness we're gonna use, which is a 